Madam Speaker, 56 years ago, President John F. Kennedy signed the Equal Pay Act. He referred to this law as a structure basic to democracy. Equal pay for equal work. In essence, equality. But the sad reality is that over 56 years later, women are still paid less than their male counterparts for the same work. I know because it happened to me. One of my first jobs was in a male-dominated industry selling steel. It didn't matter if I performed as well, if not better, than my male colleagues. It was I was still paid less. I had to leave that job, which I loved, because I wasn't getting my fair share. It was a shame then, and it is a shame now. In the 60s, women made 60 cents on the dollar. Now the average woman makes 80 cents compared to her male counterpart, 80 cents. For women of color, the gender wage gap is even more severe. For every dollar made by her non-Hispanic white male counterpart, an African-American woman makes 61 cents. A Native American woman makes 58 cents. And women who look like me, Latinas, make 53 cents on the dollar for similar work. That's less than the average woman made in 1960s. I do not, I do not work, do I not work just as hard as my male counterparts? Do I deserve to make 53 cents on the dollar? Do I not have to support my household as much as a man? Latinas lose on the average of 28,386 every year. That amounts to more than $1 million over her career. What would an extra million dollars mean for the working woman or for her children? That she never have to choose between paying for childcare or buying groceries, or not worry about how to send her kids to college. Maybe she could even, even fulfill the American dream of purchasing a home. Some people brush this off by arguing that women choose different or easier jobs than men, like being a teacher or a nurse. To those people, I ask, who sets those salaries? When was the last time you were underpaid to teach after 40 children in a classroom setting? Nursing assistants each suffer roughly three times, three times the rate of back and other injuries as construction workers. Are you going to tell me that the nurse who spends 12 hours on her feet taking care of those most in need doesn't deserve higher pay. Or the 911 dispatcher who's working the graveyard shift, fielding call after call after call, coordinating an effective emergency response so that they themselves can save lives, or the first responders can save lives. Don't tell me women's work is easier. We need equality in practice, not just in law. H.R. 7, the Paycheck Fairness Act, will make equal pay a reality. It addresses the many complicated facets of sex-based discrimination. Even when it's crystal clear, it's incredibly difficult to win a lawsuit to prove that employers are discriminating on the basis of sex. The Paycheck Fairness Act requires employers to demonstrate that wage disparity is based on a bona fide factor other than sex, such as education, training, or experience. In workplaces where women are empowered to know how much they're making compared to their male colleagues, the gender gap shrinks by 7%. However, some workplaces penalize employees for discussing their salaries. 
The Paycheck Fairness Act would prevent retaliation against employees for wage transparency. Sex discrimination causes women to make 6.6% less than equally qualified male counterparts on their first job. Over time, as raises and bonuses are decided based on a woman's prior salary history, this gap is made even worse. The Paycheck Fairness Act prevents employers from asking for a salary history. Another factor that contributes to gender pay disparity is that women are less likely to negotiate for higher salary. Studies show that men are expected to negotiate, but when women ask for more money, they are penalized and still paid less. The Paycheck Fairness Act creates a grant program to fund negotiation and skills training. Currently, employees must opt in to class action lawsuits brought under the Equal Pay Act running contrary to federal rules of civil procedure. This makes it more difficult for women to use the courts to correct equal pay disparities. The Paycheck Fairness Act allows them to opt out, removing barriers to participate in, in class action lawsuits, and therefore addressing systematic gender-based inequality. I have offered two amendments to the Paycheck Fairness Act bill that highlight the serious effects of gender pay gap on women of color. The Paycheck Fairness Act is a step in the right direction. Women who look like me should not make 53 cents on the dollar for the same work as our white male colleagues, and even less than the average woman made 60 years ago. It is wrong and it is unjust. That is why it's crucial we pass H.R. 7, the Paycheck Fairness Act. Now, I'd like to turn your attention to H.R.S. 124, expressing opposition to banning service in the armed forces by openly gay transgender individuals. For me, this issue hits close to home. I am a proud mother of an Air Force veteran. It wasn't a decision they made lightly. It was one made with great personal sacrifice. And the US government made a promise to them that they would be safe to themselves. Imagine how their mothers and fathers must feel, knowing that our nation has broken a promise to their children. This doesn't make us safer. We should welcome every qualified person who is willing to stand up to the plate and enlist in our armed forces, to serve alongside people like my son. Thank you, Madam Chair. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time.